Fergus and I are on our way to Quincy, California to test out the new Richie Outback at this year's Grindero. This is the new new. Midway to Quincy and I figured we could do a quick bike check on what we're gonna be riding out there for the Grindero. The new gravel bike that Richie is just about to come out with called the Outback and Fergus is gonna educate me and you on why this is God's gift to gravel. <laughs> Bigger volume for tires. Mainly is built around a 40C tires for a lot of really rugged roads. So you want a nice high volume tubeless tire and this is definitely a bike for it. Through axles, it really stiffens up the drive, makes it a better bike in those kind of rough conditions where QR. That's quick release. Might have been a little bit I don't know, flimsy. Some of the things that we stuck with were the traditional steel tubing. Richie Steel is legit. I don't know if it's the design of your guys' bikes or the steel or what, but there is like a snap to those frames that I've never felt in any other bike. Tom calls it a secret sauce. Really? Yeah, he calls it a secret sauce. And what it is, is it's the combination of the tubing itself, where the butts are in the tube, all of that adds up to a real incredible ride quality. It's remarkable. Another thing that we stick to our guns with is a straight steer tube. People think about tapered head tubes and wanting the stiffest front end possible. It's kind of counterintuitive. Like why would you want a super stiff front end when you're going over really rough ground? So you want something that's compliant and a straight steer definitely takes that harshness off. I I love nerding out on bike builds. Things that I went for, the Zeta wheels, I love them, tubeless out of the box, super easy to set up. Our new Speedmax tire, it's super high volume, very grippy, great tire. I raced it last season for cross. I really enjoyed the ride quality of it. Of course, we went with a link post, our new Skyline saddle. New for us, it's got a perennial cutout, so it alleviates a lot of that pressure. Then handlebars is another thing. I went with their Neomax. There's a lot of things I like about the Neomax. So it's a lot of different comfortable hand positions. So you have a flared drop. It's great if you're going down a long descent, you kind of want to get nice and low. I like the classic bend to it. To me, aesthetically, it looks really cool, but also great hand position as well. We went with the C260 stem. Lightweight, the clamping on it alleviates a lot of pressure that's on the handlebars. The other things that I want to talk about, SRAM. I've been a huge fan of SRAM since they came out. So we went with Force One Hydro. Super easy system, wide range in the back. We went with their XD cassette. So that means that you get something as small as a 10 and something as big as a 40. Praxis is the other one. What I like about it is it's a wide spindle so you get better power transfer out of it that 30 mil spindle really helps powering up things so we went with their wave ring it's really great for keeping the chain on and then the last thing that we have are the Richie pedals when I was a kid the wet red Richie pedals were the shit an homage to my childhood was throwing those red pedals on there and there you go in my opinion the perfect gravel bike for the event the bike that this guy is riding is insane. So this is the new Carbon Outback Breakaway. It's a badass bike that travels. It does gravel, it does road, it's everything. It fits inside a suitcase. Nobody has to know what's in there. It's easily 15 degrees outside. What are we gonna do? I don't know. A sea of riders. Nearly 900 of you out there today. Absolutely what? easy. Everybody is freezing their fucking asses off right now. Oh my god. So how this race works is they do, there's like four time sections and they give you these little sensors to put on your bikes and they time you through the different sections. The first section was a climb section. It was gnarly. You want to guess what's in my bar bag? No, tell us. All right, a spork, CO2, a patch tube that needs to be patched, twist army knife, a cliff bar, a spork. Inhaler? Yes, and a multi-tool. Can I say spork?
Whoa. Yeah, I'm gonna be in so in shape for my commute on Monday. Stage number two, that was terrifying. <laughs> so far, so good on the outback. We got 30 miles, 4,600 feet of elevation so far like two hours and something in. is insanely dusty. Stage three, that shit was gnarly. I thought they made modems. We've all got the black lung from the incredible amount of dust that's kicked up on this ride. <laughs> we went so hard from the end <laughs> of the second segment the road? all the way through to the road. We're smashing that downhill. Oh, the in-between. Yes, the in-between. I don't know why we went so hard, but we did. <laughs> I think it's a couple thousand feet. Dying. Holy cow, it's been a tough day. About to hit this last section, bonkers downhill. How you feeling? Who said that? Oh my God. Section four, uh, single track, double black diamond dirt descent. Oh. All right, let's go.
Grindero over. I'm actually not as decimated as uh, I was two years ago. Thank you, OMTM. The ride by the numbers. Five hours, 20 minutes rolling time. What? 63 miles. No way. And 8,000 feet of elevation. Holy cow. Fergus did it too. Oh, it's so cold. For fuck's sake.